Grilling steaks on the hibachi while you're decked out in Versace, that's gayish. When your hobby's sucking knob, but you dress like you're a slob, that's gayish. Oh, gayish, you're probably gayish. Life's just too short for narrow stereotypes, so oh, it's gayish. We're also gayish. It's gayish, it's Mike and Kyle. Hello, everyone in the. Did you just hiccup? Yep. <laughs> That's the first time in 278 episodes that that's happened. That's weird. Hello, everyone in the podcast universe. This is Gayish. The podcast where the popperbilities are endless. Peter Popper popped a pop of poppers. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> Gay tongue twisters. Dicks. I'm Gay Ma- tongue twisters. Okay, what? I'm Mike Jones. I'm Kyle Getz. And we're here to bridge the gap between sexuality and actuality. And today... Today... Uh, did, you, did you hear that difference in the theme song, Kyle? Hey, that was a little different. <laughs> You're in the right place, though. If you if that was for some reason confusing or jarring, um, yeah. uh, thank you to our winners. Um, yep. you know they know who they are. They, you know who you are. <laughs> they uh for submitting that was the uh the winners of the theme song contest. Um, yeah, and fitting because we're talking about grilling. Yeah, we're talking about grilling. So grilling steaks on the hibachi while you're decked out in Versace. Magical. That mm. was magical and uh, a, a poet amongst us. A, a, fi- a fitting a fitting start to today's episode because we're going to talk about grilling. We're talking, we're gonna talk about straight shit. Um, but first, but first, so a couple of things. Ooh. First, we were talking about pirates last week, and I was mentioning that I watch Our Flag Means Death. Mm-hmm. I've now finished it all. But like, you left my home after recording the episode. I watched the very next episode, and um, Will Arnett plays what Captain Calico Jack in as a character in that show and i was just like i was just talking about that son of a bitch and his weird like pirate thruple that he was in <laughs> and i just it was it was just this odd intersection of the universe being like <laughs> if you only you just watched one more you would know that already yeah you know? and like occasionally some of the things we look up well i was gonna say help us in everyday life mm-hmm. but that didn't mm-hmm. really help mm-hmm. anything i don't know our, our we learn information that sometimes shows up in the regular <laughs> world as well yep yeah, yeah, allegedly. Allegedly. Um, and then next, I don't want to put all of the Madison Cawthorn stuff back in the news. We talked about him last week oh, and okay. the lingerie stuff. I think we might need to do a shrinkage on him. Oh. Have you been following his story? I just saw something that was like, it gets worse and then moved on with my life. So I don't know. It gets worse. Oh. And um, I think... <sighs> How do you feel about a shrinkage? I feel great. Great. We'll do a Madison Cawthorn shrinkage because... Yeah, every 150 episodes, we can do a shrinkage. Yeah, yeah. sure. It's been a while. It's been a while. We could, like, I was thinking about it earlier. I was like, I don't know where the, I don't know where the little... the Our chipmunk voice oh. clip is. It's hiding somewhere. I have it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Today, the day that this episode comes out... Oh, yeah. If you're a normie you and bitches. Not- <laughs> Great. No, you go for it. <laughs> no, we should oh. good cop them first. Oh, this time. oh, hi, friends. <laughs> We're so grateful you're here and listening. It's so nice that you support us in whatever way, including just pressing that play button. Hey, but- listen up. Kyle's talking, fuckers. <laughs> I need you in my regular life. <laughs> um, we are nominated for a Cybersocket Award for gay porn. Nope. Gay sex podcast. This is the first year that they have podcasts listed on their nominations. So it is, you know, n- other nominees are like us and Devin Franco and Reno Gold, you know, all in one place. Obvi. Um, we are going to go to the event. So we are going to be ultra devastated if we don't win. So please yeah. go vote. Go to Cyber Awards.com, maybe? Yep, CyberSocketAwards.com. <laughs> oh, great. I did it right. Okay. Um, uh, you can vote for us. You can also vote for your favorite porn star. And- yeah, Best Cock or Daddy of the Year. Yep. You take your pick. Yep. Mike is not listed amongst the daddies of the year. Nope. This year. I'm in, I'm in only one category. Yes. Just the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, the, just the one. Yeah. The one that you can't see me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love being an audio nominee f- amongst all these hot people. So instead of like explaining all of the context, I've taken to just telling people we were nominated for a gay porn award. <laughs> the reaction is magical. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have a similar reaction too of like, we talk about a lot of things, including gay sex. 
I don't know. It is. It's. It's. It's an honor just to be nominated. Anyway, yeah. please vote. Today's your last day if you're listening to this on Thursday. I'm hoping I, I RSVP'd and said that we would be attending the red carpet event mm. in West Hollywood. Mm. And uh, I'm hoping that gets us extra points. Mm, yeah, yeah. Like, like They want people you, that are going to go. Yeah, physically accepting the award. Is Dan Savage going to go? No, probably I, not. I doubt he even gives a shit. Don't, <laughs> he has enough already in his life. I did reach out to some um, boys I follow on Twitter that were nominated in the camming category to ask if they were going to be coming there. If they would be camming there? Yeah. Um, yeah no, they're all going to remote in because that's because they're cameras. <laughs> that's part of their life. Okay. All right. And now the news. Shut your mouth hole. It's time for your ear holes. News. 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 News the first. Facebook's parent company, Meta, and TikTok have been fined by Russia under the country's anti-gay propaganda law. At this point, who had? I think we were fined by Russia. Yeah, we're not paying that shit. Nope. Um, yeah, so the, the fines were because the companies didn't remove LGBTQ plus content from their platforms, according to Russian media. Uh, one court in Moscow fined Meta, Facebook's parent company, the equivalent of about $53,000 on Tuesday last week, and another court fined TikTok twenty six grand. Like a one-time payment? That's fucking nothing to giant companies. Right, to keep doing business in Russia and not having to do the work of taking down the gay shit. Yes. Like, it would cost them more than that yeah. to fix it. I wish I could say they're like, <laughs> no, we support LGBT, but they're like, oh, okay, here's your check. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yep. Uh, judges in the case ruled that the companies did not take down posts, quote, propagating homosexual relations. Um, but it was not clear which content the platforms failed to remove that got them noticed. Mm. Um, yeah, I want to know what gay TikToks stand out to Russian authorities. Like, I my goal would be to create a TikTok so vile Russian authorities use that as an example of why we shouldn't have rights. Yeah, well, so um, recently, apparently, a 27-year-old woman was fined about $1,000 for posting pictures of same-sex parents with their children. Mm, mm, mm. So it, it doesn't take much. Yeah. To, to get, to... Our friends, if these ovaries could talk, are probably getting fined out the wall. Wazoo, if they're on TikTok. Yeah. Out the wazoo. Mm -hmm. Have I ever heard you use that phrase before? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's take it to the records. Um, all right. Well, uh, the gay propaganda law was uh, implemented in Russia in 2013, and it bans any mention of LGBTQ plus issues in venues that are accessible to minors, because it's always about the kids, mm -hmm, Kyle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. Vladimir Putin once called trans acceptance a crime against humanity. And of course, Chechnya, which is a, a semi-autonomous region of Russia, has been really awful to LGBTQ plus people, especially gay men. Mm -hmm. And it's just a fucked up part of the world, Kyle. Yeah. And it continues to be fucked up. It's an interesting thing about the Internet is that you have to start to there are a million different authorities that you have to decide if you care about or not this you know yeah interesting byproduct and isn't the irony of this whole story that facebook is being fined for being too gay friendly yeah. <laughs> that's true. Oh, wait, you're right that somehow passed me by in this yes that's hilarious because it is also famously bad at lgbt issues and support so like man someone at facebook is like I can't, I don't, I can't do any, I don't know. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, anyway. There's probably like one low-level diversity and inclusion person that's just like, I don't know, I'm just going to go poop for an hour. I, I don't know what else to do. I can't. Uh, news the second? Yeah. Great. So the, there was an anti-trans sports bill in Kansas that is now officially dead. And it died because the Kansas House of Representatives failed to override Governor Laura Kelly's veto. Oh. So we've seen cases of other states where there's a veto process where the, 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 the governor will veto something. And then the legislature has just to pass it again. Like 50% <laughs> plus one is enough to yeah. override a governor's veto. We've seen that multiple times. A 50 plus one. I would have thought it was like a, you know, two thirds or three quarters or something to override a veto. Well, that's what normal states oh, do. Okay. <laughs> but there are lots of states that have basically hobbled their governor's ability to veto things mm. by making it this majority mm. standard to override instead of 
a supermajority of some kind. Kansas requires a supermajority. So the bill passed the House and the Senate, went to the governor's desk. She vetoed it. The Senate voted to override the veto by a margin of 28 to 10, which meant the two-thirds threshold required in Kansas. But a supermajority was required in both chambers, and the House of Representatives voted 81 to 41 in favor of an override. They needed 84 votes to do it, so it is now dead. Today I learned that Kansas's governor is a lady hmm. and a Democrat. Oh, that's mm-hmm. why... Oh, no, they, they had the... That I just imagine some of the places that are like, we don't want you to be able to do this, so we're going to make it 51 plus one. I just imagine that being because they may have a Democrat in as governor at some point and want to be able to override it easier. Yeah. But yeah. not in this case. That, I mean, that's you, cool. You, you, you don't want to assume somebody's, not pronouns, but you don't want to assume somebody's political leading until you see the letter next yeah. to their name. <laughs> but you're, you can be pretty sure on some other kinds of evidence. Yes, yes. Right? Trust yeah. me, I am always looking for that D. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the the article on the advocate, uh, advocate.com says that Kentucky and Utah are places where the legislators were able to overcome a governor's veto. Um, I, I think it's going to be on theme for this episode, but the some of those assumptions of this is a Republican state, I think... You know, we speak in general generalities, but as we've talked about in rural areas, there's still a decent number of liberal or Democrat or yeah. LGBT people. And that makes a big difference because one person in the right spot in governor uh, office or, you know, representatives can stop these things. Yep. Yep. Which is really important. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Anyway, Kansas, I'm glad that you sucked at sucking. <laughs> 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 it's the most negative way to uh, appreciate that this happened. Yep, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they tried to be dumb and couldn't be dumb good enough. Yep. The bill would have barred trans girls and women from participating alongside cis females in public schools, including state colleges and universities, and any private schools that compete against them. Hmm. Would not have affected trans male athletes. Anyway, um, oh, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot Ooh. to say this. Governor Kelly, who, as far as I can tell, is badass, Mm -hmm. said, quote, We all want a fair and safe place for our kids to play and compete. However, this bill didn't come from the experts at our schools, Mm -hmm. our athletes, or the Kansas State High School Activities Association. It came from politicians trying to score political points. Yep, yep. And that's absolutely true. Yep. Just, if you want to rile up your base and get voted back in as a dickbag, fuckface, asshole Republican... Talk about trans shit. That's, this is the way that clearly you get pressed because of it. Republicans are very much in support of it. Uh, and yes, this is a great way to to do that, unfortunately. News the last. Great. I have the most spectacular love-hate relationship with this story. Okay. I don't know if you have seen it or not, but... Just in time for Pride, there are a series of five drag shows happening across the country at Taco Bell. I okay. <laughs> We joked on our episode about brunch that Denny's should have a Denny's best drag queen or whatever competition. And then like the next day, it was it, Taco Bell came out with this story. And I think we willed it into existence. Yep. It's us. This is our this doing. This is us. We claimed this. <laughs> Taco Bell has drag brunch coming to a series of cities. And uh, the out.com article says, and bottoms everywhere have been found shaking. Um <laughs> Oh yeah, I love drag queens. I'm eating at Taco Bell, but I love brunch. But boy, this meat's not going to sit well. What's a bottom to do? Yep, um, take it in the mouth, bottoms. You know, like you can just give a blowjob. That's fine. Yeah, just, just one day, take a break, eat Taco Bell, give a blowjob. Yeah, and I know, I know that that gordita is going to fit in that mouth. You whore, <laughs> <laughs> you dirty slut. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> or like yelling at our audience for eating tacos or something. You would love putting that taco in your mouth, you filthy, dirty <laughs> whore. <laughs> oh man, I'm sweaty now. Okay, uh, uh, so the drag brunch series from Taco Bell includes the following cities and dates: Las Vegas today of this taping, May first. Oh, so sorry, you all right missed now. it. Uh, Chicago on May 22nd, Nashville on the 29th. 
New York City on June 12th and Fort Lauderdale on June 26th. And uh, they have committed to donating an, donating an undisclosed grant to the It Gets Better project. Hmm. Um, yeah, apparently. OK, so the, apparently Taco Bell has a rewards program. <laughs> that gets you vip seating at the drag brunch <laughs> if you're, if you're, what's the vip seating at taco bell if, if you, early access to reservations via open table because reservations are limited customers must be 18 years of age or older in order to attend a taco bell drag brunch given that these al- these events will be serving alcohol oh including mimosas um and but they're also offering regular items from the taco bell breakfast menu i i just I just I think VIP seating at Taco Bell is just in the bathroom. Like I'm already here, poised and ready. You know, I don't even have to walk anywhere. I can just eat shit it out. Eat shit it out. Oh man. I just I just Taco Bell. What's the hate? I love everything about this. There's nothing bad about this. I think this is <laughs> fucking hilarious. It's a it's a funny it's a good PR, it's just, I love this. Maybe Taco Bell would let us do a live show Oh my god. (laughs) I would absolutely do a live show at Taco Bell. In the bathroom. In the bathroom, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's the news. That's the news. Speaking of other people, I would do an episode from within. (laughs) Thank you to the... You don't have to hopefully analyze it. Thank you to the following Patreon members for your support. Michael Reppin, not brothers of adam rippon um john robertson that's a made-up name uh, that's fake um that's a fake name mike johnson um (laughs) and probably johan but i'm gonna call them johan anderholm johan anderholm johan anderholm (laughs) the <laughs> most American I can say that name I think we're now caught up on saying Patreon names if you haven't heard your name either I messed up or you weren't listening so uh, I don't I have nothing <laughs> I don't know um, think, support us at patreon.com slash gayish podcast great are you ready to talk about grilling yeah let's talk about grilling uh, it is a straight thing we were looking back and have not talked about a like super butch straighty right. like straighterson thing and this is absolutely one of them yeah for sure and we're going to talk about why, mm-hmm. but like when you really start thinking about it, it's totes mask. Like we've, <laughs> we've, we've painted that activity as totes mask in our like universe for like reasons, but like, it's so yeah. fucking weird. Yeah. 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 Th- th- this is, I don't know how many episodes we need to do this before I stop saying this. At first I was like, I have nothing to talk about. And then mm-hmm. I started looking up mm-hmm. shit. I think there's a lot of interesting things here, but um, yeah, when I was thinking about uh, there, there is a lot about it that is um, stereotypically straight. Like what, what do those include? Fire. Yeah. Meat. Yeah. Providing for your family. Yeah being away from other people and getting to do a thing yeah being outside outside uh propane and uh, like there's enough tinkering and shit on it that you can uh, yeah like have a grill and a little bit tech also you you know yeah can like upkeep and for for real like yeah so yeah it has a lot (laughs) that we deem masculine well I, I I do did want to touch briefly on a language thing, like we need to calibrate on okay. what we mean by grilling. Okay, sure. Because th- grilling, like strictly speaking, grilling means cooking something fast and hot on an mm-hmm. open flame. Cook me fast and hot. Typically on a grill that you sit over whatever the source of heat is, mm-hmm. but. There's a regional thing happening here. Is that barbecue? Mm. Is that barbecuing? And like we invite people to come to a barbecue when all of the food is grilled. Yeah. Like letter of the law. Yeah. But it, it's, I don't know. Is is that true where you grow up too? Because like, like to my to my until I started researching stuff for this episode, I realized that like barbecue and grill are like the nouns are the same. Like the apparatus that you cook on it i i call them i call it both yeah and um the process i also sort of think of as being both or interchangeable like if i if i say barbecue and i don't specify like i mean the style of preparation yeah then i mean the fire cooking thing yeah 
Yeah. No, that's the same for me. I, I'm sure there, are, even though I grew up in Texas, I'm, I was not a huge barbecue person. I both hate barbecue sauce. You I think love it's meat. disgusting. I, I do love me some meat. <laughs> um, but also good barbecue doesn't need barbecue sauce in Texas. People assume, Oh, like barbecue, you slather it in barbecue sauce, but that's one of the available sauces when you get good barbecue. So I feel like there's something else. I don't know what it is when you get Texas barbecue that they've prepared a meat in a style, but I don't, but that, and that's barbecue. Yeah. It's not the sauce, but there's something about it. Yeah. But that is different than putting it over the flame of your, you know, propane grill. But yep. Yes, you would invite barbecue for me feels more like the event. There's more associated with it outside of the food. It's like a yeah. thing. Like it's a cookout. It's people hanging out and kids in the pool and there's sun. Cookout. And probably, there's a word. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I <laughs> think my, my, you identified at least one word in this episode. Well, and slather. I wanted to talk about oh, slather. Like, sure. I hate that word. Really? Is it's, that your moist? It's like moist, but like moist you can use for like brownies or cupcakes or whatever. But like slather. Slather is always filthy. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, it's real gross. Um Okay, so it's, yes. Yes. <laughs> Slather is always real gross. I just, yeah. Do we need to yeah, pause and reflect on that fact? I'm there. Done. Okay. okay. Um, should I tell you? Can I? Oh, oh, no. The strict definition of barbecue is low and slow indirect heat. And <laughs> there are purists who are like, if it's not that, it's not barbecue. Don't fucking say it oh, that way. Sl- slower cooking of meat. It takes okay. a long ass time. Okay. It is more smoke based. It's not direct heat. Like you, 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 it's more of like a outdoor baking or something. Any, anyway, gotcha. just like, and I, I think prescriptivism is dead. Fuck everybody. I'm going to call it barbecuing if I want to. Yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 Uh, agreed. You get it. You all get it. There. Uh, so uh, I had, just to start off, I looked up on Data Lounge, oh, okay. a website I only recently became aware of. Yeah. Um, its motto is "We're worse than Quora and Reddit combined." Um, nice. It, um, I looked up the user submission. Wait, uh, is that their actual motto? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. No. <laughs> I could see that working. Like, there's a whole that like, is kind of funny. Th- there's yeah. a whole like marketing thing about being yeah, self facing. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that we are. We've. I haven't done it as much recently, but we really, really lean hard into. Oh, there's part of it that's not a ploy. Sometimes I just think I suck. Okay, hi. Um, Data Lounge user responses to the question: Why are straight men so obsessed with barbecue? Why are they so obsessed with barbecue? It's very good that you clarified that barbecue cannot mean what it means to mean because that would have changed the context of this question um why are they obsessed with barbecue barbecue or grilling or like okay great they mean great grilling. great um oh you do you want to oh do you, do you want to answer for no, yourself before I, you because i think i have some like answers that are actually right and oh that's, yeah that's, that's annoying right. to like do the right thing and then let me read all the wrong yeah yeah, yeah. um the first answer they're fat whores <laughs> <laughs> thanks data lounge sure great okay <laughs> sure yep okay um, the next one, gay men too. When we barbecue, the gays line up at the trough. I don't, I like the urinal trough. I couldn't tell if that was a misspelling or if that was supposed to be a joke or a pun or an innuendo of some kind that I didn't understand when we barbecue. Is it smoking the meat? We line up at the trough and then someone's, th- I don't know. I didn't understand that comment. Do it, people barbecue in a trough? I, I, it's smoking meat. That's a trough? No, no, no. I, I'm okay. Yes, this is what I'm bringing so much. To, if this is a joke, I'm imagining when the when we when the gays barbecue, we lined up at the trough because someone is at the trough giving beeges, and that's smoking meat. I don't, I don't understand this comment. I think, I think that that's a play on trough, like as a receptacle for barbecued meat. And oh, trough like pig, like the pig trough. Like we line up, at, we eat a lot of barbecue. All they were saying is we also eat barbecue. Okay, but but, 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 then, but then but then also like trough is a very like I, you'd say gay men and trough in the sentence, and I'm thinking about urine. I'm absolutely like, thinking about someone pissing on other people. Okay, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Wow. Oh wow. Okay, that was a lot. Um. Next comment. <laughs> Do you mean minding the grill itself? That's about control and not having to mingle. Which I thought there was something uh, to that. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Like the two aspects control. I'm in charge of something. This is my responsibility. And that's part of what you're supposed to be as a, as a straight dude is like have shit together, have control over, I mean, everything, but so boil that down. And especially, I think it's so weird because at a party or event, stereotypically the woman's supposed to plan the party or event. Yeah. And this is your area of domain. Yeah. Or it's also weird cooking tends to be a presumed female activity, but you yeah. take it outside and put it on little like a metal thing. And, and now it's the dude's thing. I don't know. Yep. For sure. Um, and not having to, to mingle. I, I think that's a, a very good point. Well, and there's the trope of, the dude goes to the back patio where the grill is and is in charge of making that happen. And then like the other straight guys, not in big groups of them, but like one or two at a time <laughs> are allowed to go out there and observe, but don't fucking touch the grill. Cause mm. that's gay. Like, <laughs> touch you, <laughs> don't touch a man. Don't touch man's another grill. man's grill. <laughs> okay. But, and then like, it's okay to talk about grilling. Yeah. At, at length. I don't, and I don't think you're allowed to, <laughs> Uh, like you don't offer suggestions or or dispute any that's of their as bad process. as touching it that's as bad as touching it <laughs> according to jesus but you are allowed to ask questions about the process oh yeah. how long you leave in that meat on oh, yeah. oh do you flipped them oh you put i see you put some cheese on that'll be great for the kiddos i don't i'm yeah. imagining straight dudes conversations being very boring in surface yes I think they are. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think that's accurate. Um, another comment mm. uh, is I'm gay and love barbecuing. Two reasons. I think one, I love cooking and two at parties. I'm very quiet. And as a result tend to feel left out, but as cool as I can remain, but, but as cool as I can remain quiet and still be very sociable. Um, mm. So it, it's interesting that we'll talk more other, as I mentioned, other of my segments, we'll talk more about, there's these generalities that tend to apply to certain people, but then like a, a gay dude like me, we, we expect gay men to be sociable and outgoing and the life of the party, which is like, boy, that's not me. And that, that always <laughs> made me feel bad that I was not the life of the party, but a gay man also being like, I like having a separate project that I can do kind of separate. I'm kind of involved in the party and not. Yeah. Um, next comment. <laughs> Why are straight men so obsessed with barbecue? Straight American men have shitty lives. They have, sh <laughs> they have shitty things expected of them, and most of them lack the guts to rebel. They get along by going along. Oh. That's a phrase. That's a life motto. Um, grilling outdoors is fun. They don't have much that is fun. Let them have this re respite from their dreary, awful straight lives. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, that's... It's pretty wow. real. Yeah, that's a lot. We do have a lot of fun things being gay. And it's purely because we're gay that we get some fun, exciting things. Sure. That straight dudes don't get. Yeah. Yeah. That they can totally have if they want. But um, Next one. It's the one cooking thing they can do without uh, that that fa facilitates their masculine image. So, of course, they're obsessed with it. And yeah. it is uh, they're allowed to do this cooking thing and not other cooking things, which is interesting. Yep. Yeah, it, which is just, uh, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, I think, right? Like, like dudes are allowed to do that because we have allowed them to, so they do. And then that more strongly associates, it's just so, it's just so, so arbitrary and yeah. weird. Yeah. I mean, to add on to self-fulfilling prophecy, like gifts for him, this is another comment, gifts for him, an unnecessary elaborate set of cooking implements in a manly tool, uh, toolbox type carrier. So... The, not only is this thing for him, then we know it's for him. And now because it's hard to shop for straight dudes or shop for dad, then these show up on lists and then we buy them things that contribute to it and it keeps building on itself. Yep. Yeah. And how much of that too is just like laziness. Like <laughs> instead of finding out what your what the dad actually enjoys or likes, just yeah. get him a giant spatula you... and like <laughs> <laughs> number one most needed grilling item <laughs> a large spatula you have to be able to flip like five chickens or it's gay yep <laughs> um, uh, um next comment doesn't it seem weird that human men flamboyant gays accepted are so drab in comparison with human women when in the rest of nature the males are the colorful beautiful ostentatious ones that's true. That's interesting. Like I think of uh, peacocks as being like the super colorful ones to like show off and attract. 
Or like all of those weird ass birds that do those funky ass dances yes. to try to get the attention of the ladybirds. <laughs> Boy, I wish that this podcast was visual for your bird dance. Um, uh, last, I've been practicing. Yeah, you yeah. practice bird dances yeah. to attract <laughs> bird ladies. Hey, you don't know what I'm into. I do. I hope I know a little bit. Um, last one, maybe because deep in his little heart of hearts, every straight is hardwired is a hardwired Neanderthal. OP, you know, hunting, gathering, the thrill of the kill. Yep. Which that one I will follow up on more. The thrill of the kill. In a future segment. The the idea that's part of um the idea of where this stereotype comes from, that men are the hunters, so this involves cooking the meat, providing for your family. Yep. So uh, there there's more to that, but I will leave it at that for now. Okay. Well, so we're already sort of touching on it, but I was going to talk to you about the history of grilling. I t- okay. But that's dumb. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so so most sources, if, if, if grilling is just meat directly on fire, we've been doing it before we were even modern humans. Hmm. Like Homo erectus and uh, Neander- the Neanderthals, they all likely cooked meat on open flame there's archaeological evidence that suggests it's been going back as far back as two million years pre-modern humans i thought i don't know i i had no idea what actually happened but i just kind of thought early days like they just kind of ate raw meat i didn't know that it was so common to cook meat it's 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 a good segue kyle oh sure so grilling can be dated back to the days of the caveman it is believed that cavemen came across some sort of animal that died in a fire and then <laughs> ate it. <laughs> a little burnt. If I just kind of pick at these pieces, it tastes fine. Olga, it's fine. There's there's a lady sitting in the corner like, you ruined the meat. And he's like, Olga, it's fine. We yeah. got to just pick around it. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, 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 God. That's a hilarious uh, idea of where it came from. But, but that's... that's the prevailing theory is that must be how we discovered like oh you heat this up but it tastes better mm. um they they must have found that that the meat that had been cooked in this way that it was tastier and easier to digest than when it was raw and how much human food is just based on like terrible decisions <laughs> Right, like like was like booze was invented because like a bunch of fruit was sitting around rotting, and then somebody was like, "I'm gonna eat it anyway." And then they got <laughs> then they got a little bit hammered, and then they were like, "Yeah, Ooh, let's, let's keep doing. Let's that. do this on purpose." Yeah, yeah. Um, or like uh, fruits and berries and stuff is someone just had to be like, "I'll try it." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and seven days later, still alive, and they're like, "Cool, we can keep eating that thing." Then, yeah, yeah. All right, like. <laughs> Like, obviously, like, babies nurse from their mothers, but then uh, who was like, I wonder if milk out of something else would taste good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and <laughs> I squeeze my wife's tits. T- <laughs> like, I, I should try other things, too. Oh, man. Um, so, more pirate shit from last week. It, so, the, the word barbecue comes from Hispaniola and the, the Spanish conquistadors, and they found that the indigenous tribes of Caribbean islands um, had this process of putting meat on a fire and then putting green wood uh, between the fire and the meat so that it would get heat and smoke but not cooked. Mm. And Mm. that they, uh, the the Spanish called this barbacoa, which that is where the word barbecue comes from. Mm. There's some argument about the etymology of that, but that's the that's for our etymology podcast. Yep, exactly. Yep, and and then I I didn't realize this. Like, okay, we'll get to this, and and I always associate grilling and barbecuing with the 1950s, and that's absolutely accurate. Again, for reasons that I'll discuss. But apparently, there was a fairly robust and big cultural thing happening with grilling and barbecuing in the uh early days like colonial times Hmm. so there were loud quote loud rambunctious events with lots of heavy drinkers in attendance Mm -hmm. called barbecues and they turned into the 19th century they became polite well-mannered events that brought people together apparently during the civil war there were barbecues that were open to the public to try to rally support for the troops oh and uh this was the first time barbecues became political but barbecue 
sort of remained a community event uh, as a result of that. I associate all of this. I associate barbecues as being a very American pastime. And I don't know if that's just because I grew up here and Americans think everything is about us <laughs> or if that's true. Like, I mean, for uh, Fourth of July, like that's a big thing. So that we do associate it with like our national, some of our national holidays. But it is it actually an American kind of event great uh, great great segue we'll, we'll we'll skip forward to oh. to the 1950s so when you think in your head of like the dad wearing the big poofy hat and an apron and the giant ass spatula <laughs> yep next to a smoking grill photograph or cartoon it's probably an image from the 1950s hmm. right that's heavily associated with post-world war ii pre-hippie 1950s we were like our families back together. We can be regular nuclear male female parent families <laughs> that are just normal and everything's fine. Yes. Asterisk, straight white yeah. families. Yeah. So this is really difficult to separate from the whole suburban white flight that happened mm. post World War II, and it's actually the reason we have gayborhoods, hmm. right? That there was all of this wealth that had been generated during the the post-war economic rebound and lots of successful white families were leaving urban centers for the sub suburbs and suburbia had more space all of this planning lots of ways of making sure that no black people lived there yeah. all of these big developments that had all of these like cookie cutter track houses that had backyards now suddenly there is this I have a backyard. What am I going to do? I'm going to use it and I'm going to cook stuff out there. Yep. And and so but it, it really is the post-war suburban white flight that creates a culture of not just grilling, but its association with masculinity hmm. and uh dominance in our culture. Hmm. Related it's gay to be a gardener, <laughs> yeah. but it is not gay to care for your lawn. Right. And there are theories that all of that is for the same reason as barbecuing. At least the 1950s, huh. the house is my castle. The man is king of the castle. There's this outdoor area. It's okay to manicure and take care of. It's okay to cook meat out there on this grill. Like that, All of that goes together in the 1950s. There's, some, there's something with complex machines make something a dude thing like a grill or a lawnmower if if a thing requires a machine of sorts or, or some kind of gas power mm -hmm. it's like a dude thing chainsaws chainsaw for leaf sure. blowers yeah riding lawnmowers mm -hmm. yeah you're onto something yep um so also the modern day grill was invented by a dude hmm. his name was george stephen he was a metal Not worker george foreman no nope. oh George Foreman. That's the, the first grill. That's the 90s. <laughs> okay. Um, George Stephen was a metal worker for the Weber Brothers Metal Spinning Company. Weber? Oh. But I, I was hung up on metal spinning company. Yeah, Before I, grills, metal spinning was like kind of a niche event or something. So apparently one of the things that that metal spinning company did was okay. make big metal buoys. Like metal float in the water buoys oh. for uh, different, different purposes. But uh, he... Decided to take one of those giant ass metal buoys, cut it in half, and weld legs to it, and thus the Weber grill was born. Mm. Um, it got super famous, obviously. Weber basically stopped spinning metal except to make these barbecues. It became such a big success. Imagine being a metal spinner and having to live in the era before grills. Like, this is my passion, <laughs> and I have to make shit that no one cares about that sits in the ocean and it's very dumb yeah god you like you like die the day the grill is invented and you're like no my life yeah right <laughs> it's a, one of those tragic movies like the in heaven it's right? like a tragic twilight zone yeah. <laughs> episode yeah yeah so so yeah the, like that that dude invented the modern grill and it's i think no no coincidence that that that, that happens in uh the 1950s okay so I read a study, and I know what I know what you're gonna say. I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say what studies are my thing? <laughs> uh -huh. 
but um the anyway uh, sorry that's all i have to say about like the history so, oh, okay. like it's, it's basically the, the 1950s and then it continues and then there's this whole thing in the 1990s when like there's the george foreman mm-hmm. grill and i was going to talk about that briefly, oh really but, but just just that, like that's what it's called but why is it called that it's oh. not a grill it's not mm. an open flame like it's a because he's a dude and he to have the you know george foreman ham press is less exciting than a grill that's true that's true yeah i i what i like about your segment is is the so many of our stereotypes of what is masculine like we've seen anything that's feminine becomes a gay stereotype but it, things that are masculine are also very easily trace trace backable to whiteness to straightness to cisness like all of those ideas are connected and even though some of the stereotypes are different they they all have roots in the same kind of thing so yep. i think this is a great example of that yep absolutely yeah. I, I i agree my segment is amazing yeah <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> i agree i did a very very good job okay cool but i i do it's it's interesting that like now do we should we cancel barbecuing <sighs> like we have we have the suburbs to thank for creating the vacuum that allowed gayborhoods to exist mm. and and gay ghettos in general and but it's it's real bad you know, no, keep cooking. All right, great. I don't know. Just donate to a black charity every time you cook meat. And maybe a vegan one just for good measure. Vegans. <clears throat> um, <laughs> the, oh, the, the other one thing, one thing that I read in this study, uh, uh, the study was called Grilling in America, a gender-based study hmm. by Sean Connolly, Linnea Jackson, and Jacob Schmitter. They have a study for fucking everything. How is that a study? Jesus. Wow. Yep. How about how about cancer? Can we cure cancer, kids? Like what anyway. They did a bunch of studies or surveys and blah blah blah. But um one of the things that popped out in this study was that they associated the masculinity of grilling with the fact that there's fire. Like the, just that if you light anything on fire, <laughs> it is immediately male. Yep. Which is really true. Like who makes the fire in a campground? It's the Boy Scout dude guy. Yep. Who lights the fireworks on fire and probably like pokes their friend's eye out with it. Mm-hmm. It's a dude. Like yeah. there, there's something about the the danger of interacting with fire <laughs> that therefore makes it masculine. And yeah. I, I think that's really, it's really interesting. It's, uh, yeah, I was just thinking, like, why is danger and recklessness associated with masculinity? Why is that a connection? And I think there is something to, in not a shitty way that the data lounge thing said, there, there is a kind of directness or plainness seems negative, but there's a plainness to straight men's lives that they have you know, what are certain things that they get? And some yeah. of the things that they get are the more dangerous things. And maybe it's also like connected to the assumption that um, men, again, like some of the assumptions about physical build or capabilities or whatever, that they are more able to handle some of those things. I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I think I, this makes me real nervous. Um, I, there is a, there's a bunch of stuff about gender wrapped up here that I have a hard time unpacking Hmm. of without saying that it makes it right. There is a theory of sexual dimorphism in humans makes men bigger, faster, stronger, aggressive women, more nurturing and caretaking. They have the babies, they take care of the babies and therefore they take care of the house because that's where all of that is while the dude goes and hunts and gathers and brings it back and f- fights off the other tribes or whatever the fuck. <laughs> but that, that like there is a gendered biology that is true that has led to more things than just how our bodies differ, but also how our brains differ and that um, leads to a lot of these concepts of what it means to be masculine and we're challenging those as a modern society and rightly so but i have a hard time figuring out like which ones are justifiable on the basis of anthropology and biology yeah. versus which ones are utter horseshit and a construct and we shouldn't we shouldn't give them any credence yeah. so I, I i i don't i, think, I don't know i think you did something that's a good example of Yes, there 
are absolutely biological differences on average. That's, that is a fact. And, but what you said is that makes men stronger and power, more powerful. There are judgments to that. The truth is a physical height difference. Stronger is what we bring to it because then we say, oh, men are better at these sports or this thing when it's like, okay, that's not all sports. They're stronger in, in certain, there are certain ways. It's, I think it's the judgment that that makes them stronger. That's the step that we take that assigns a good value to some of the physical characteristic differences. And I think that's the, you can, it sounds justifiable to say men are stronger, but it's like at what <laughs> yeah. and doing what, and is that actually true? And is it true of all men? You know, there's, I think the, the step of, What's what's the actual physical comparable difference? I, I think you're super right to hone in on sort of the loaded nature of the word strong. Yeah. And I, I I love to f- I, be loaded, find the loaded. <laughs> I don't know. Never mind. I, I mean, musculoskeletal strength, like, yep. uh, which it tends to be true. Yeah. Like, and, and but I think what you said is what a lot of people say, which is part of the shittiness of, of then just shortening that to men are stronger. Well, right. that's, you know. That's the judgment and the Brittany, assumption of Brittany superior. is stronger than yesterday. Yeah. It's nothing but her way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can I, can we keep going yeah. on some of these things? I think, Absolutely. Okay. Um, I kind of, I didn't think I was going to like this episode so much, but oh, I like really enjoy wow. it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Take that past us. <laughs> we chose this. We thought you sucked, but you don't. Okay. I want to talk more about the hunter gatherer thing, because sure. I think that also speaks to some of these differences that, there are some differences, but are they exactly what we think? Yeah, okay. for sure. Um, Hunter is a hot name. We've discussed this before. Oh. We don't need to talk more about that. But Which, talk about, like, maybe a toxically masculine thing to name your kid Hunter. Oh. Like, take that, Joe Biden. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, I think of the Hunter from Weeds. He's super hot. Okay, picture it. Two- Sicily. Sicily. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, 2018. Okay. Randall Haas is an archaeologist at the University of California, Davis. Uh, Randall gets off the plane, uh, fresh eyes, excited about uh, the uh, burial that is being evacuated as an ar- archaeologist. Randall takes the car ride. I don't know any of this. I just wanted oh, it to be like straight? a story. I don't. I don't know if it's even a dude. What's he wearing? Or, uh, 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 boxers. Well, okay. And nothing else. <laughs> I don't know. What, what's on his iPod? Um, uh, you know, Stronger by Britney Spears. Because okay. even straight dudes get motivated by that song, and it's fine. Sure. You're allowed to. Great. Right. Also, like, The Doors. I don't know. Um, he, he is straight, though. Nick. I No, I don't know. And I don't know anything about Randall, gender, or orientation. Okay. There's only so much I care about this person. Um. In the Andes Mountains in Peru, they uh, have evacuated a burial of a person that had been buried 9,000 years ago. Um, in the burial, they find bones, not the t- not a DVD of the TV show, uh, human <laughs> remains. Uh, <laughs> um, and an impressive and extensive uh, stone tools, set of stone tools that are used in hunting. Okay. So they're all like, oh, this dude was like, that's cool. Like they must have been real good at hunting and killing and all that shit. And then they, again, I don't know any. But they took uh, one of the bones back to the lab and someone put it under a microscope. And another scientist was like, "That's not how we do it." And they were like, "Shut up! This is Kyle's story. You don't get to talk in this story." <laughs> um, and they found out that it was a woman. Okay. Yeah. I. 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 I, I you kind of thought. I had a hand. Damn it. Uh, so Randall Haas, the, this researcher. You don't know how she identified. <laughs> okay okay actually 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 in the national Gre- geographic story they did really good at this they there i was going to read this quote importantly the team cannot know the individual's gender identity but rather only biological sex which like gender doesn't always exist on a binary in other words they can't say whether the individual lived their life nine thousand years ago in a way that would identify them within their society as a woman great that's great that was like an entire paragraph yeah i, I really enjoyed that and I, I think it's helpful. Good job, Net Geo, and yeah. like being woke. Right? <laughs> um, I, not only is that helpful for our current, you know, in the current political climate, whatever. Also, when looking at people from the past and, and different groups, there are different ways people identify that are not even 
you know we would call trans but are different like there there's uh, it's there's a recognition there of entire societies have different things that are different anyway um yeah. so upon realizing that the bones were of a, a woman uh, randall haas said in the article um quote i'm as guilty as anyone i thought yeah that makes sense with my understanding of the world sure. upon the, the assumption that it was a man which i really appreciated that quote of the ability to recognize like oh wow i made an assumption and i messed up and saying i'm as guilty as anyone so many people can't just take that step of like oh yeah that was wrong if if more people could just do that one basic thing god <sighs> okay so what that leads to is this 2018 discovery made big news at, at the time big news as much as any archaeological study can that's not you know in the movie jurassic park <laughs> um um so upon the study they started going back and looking to figure out has this happened other times you know how many women are uh, were hunters blah, blah blah um someone one of the researchers said asked like okay well that body was found with those that hunters gear and stuff but maybe that was maybe they're not actually hunter maybe they were buried with it for re religious reasons or symbolic reasons or whatever and, and <laughs> what maybe maybe those tools were for doing hair and we're like <laughs> yeah <laughs> they were etched with just girl things right. uh, yeah um yeah, the, the, were they pink yeah. was it, was yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah they, they bought the, the women it was 20 percent more expensive <laughs> compared to the men's hunting gear um one of the researchers in response Kath, kathleen sterling an archaeologist at Brighamton university um said quote we typically don't ask this question when we find these toolkits with men it's only when it challenges our ideas about gender that we ask these questions yeah which i i like that because it's probably fair to ask all these questions about things around it were they actually buried with that was that what was the reason they were placed there but if you see hunting tools with a dude that dude was a hunter when yeah. it's with a woman well, how did that get there whatever and and that's another part that i like Randall's ability to just be like, oh, I made an assumption. That that was bad. Yep. Because in, rather than analyzing and being like, maybe, yeah, maybe someone dropped it there on their way to, you know, kill bison or whatever. Yeah. Yep. I think this is a deep poll. I'm sorry. But sure. like, I think it's why people don't trust science or something. Like, they assume that scientists have the same level of like inability to be wrong that they do. Oh. But like scientists that are actual scientists are always like questioning things and willing to be wrong and looking for ways in which they are wrong and trying to like fix it because yeah. they're interested in like the truth. But like people don't trust that they're actually like that and just uh, assume that they're as self-serving as they are. Yeah. Or whatever. It, it, like, I also think they, I agree. And on top of that, I think they don't understand the ability to learn new information and change your mind. They're like, oh, you just changed, you just changed that. Now it means you were wrong the whole time. Yeah, it's in like, politics, that's weakness, right? Yeah, like, yes, uh, exactly. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't know we would solve why people don't trust science in this episode <laughs> about grilling, but here we are. Okay. A In a 2020 study that was published in science Ad advanced see i have a research name mine too mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. um the study reviewed burials that were in a similar location and found that potentially 30 to 50 percent of big game hunters could have been female wow which that's yeah that's challenges some things yeah, yeah that's more than the zero that we assign <laughs> it to when we say men are hunters and women are gatherers anthropologist Carol, the the kind of most we know is it is still largely true that men tended to be the hunters, women tended to be the gatherers. Um, anthropologist Car Carol Ember surveyed uh, 179 societies. She found that um, this is smudged, so some number of women <laughs> participated in hunting. Boy, that would be really interesting if I had the number, <laughs> the correct number here. Because yeah, yeah. hold, hold, please. She found 13. 13 what you might ask let me tell you lady hunters <laughs> of 179 societies she found 13 in which women participated in hunting oh, okay sure. so still this data is not saying 
yeah, half the women were hunters and it was, you know, all equal. So there is something to it. Also, this is why I kept mentioning when you start to boil it down to men are hunters, God, in this society, 30 to 50%, like that's a big amount that you're discounting completely. Yeah. 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 There are examples where they are more collaborative and men and women worked together. For example, it just walked through how in these societies women may have contributed and it talked about helping to trap animals, clubbing it t- to death and carrying it home. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been a woman's role, which that is, I, you know, very stereotypical behavior <laughs> in my mind of like, I've, I've seen that in cartoons. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, she carried it home? Yeah. I mean, big game is heavy. Women can do anything, Mike. Yeah. Hillary Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, they would make a lot of the tools and items needed to hunt, like the transportation, the weapons, the clothing. Uh, Sometimes they would locate the uh, game, surround it, drive it towards the place that it was killed. So uh, maybe it's just that the dudes were more likely to be the ones that, I don't know, shot an arrow at it or fucking bonked it on the head. But to, to if, if women are locating it, pushing it towards the right place and, I yeah. guess n- not hunter technically. I don't, that's hunting. Like that's part yeah. of this hunting process that, yeah. This is like all of those research teams where like the white straight dude in a lab coat is the one that gets the credit. Mm. <laughs> like like that, that, that caveman had a whole team behind yeah. him. And he, <laughs> he, he, I, in science, whoever yells Eureka the loudest yeah, gets yeah. the credit <laughs> for the discovery, <laughs> which is a really frustrating. Yeah. I also think that's part of where, the the judgment comes into play like we talked about with physical differences i'm going to assume that means powerful as the assumption the judgment will bring to it if we're assuming that hunter is like the facts of what they did versus oh you were the one that conked it on the head that means you're the uh, there there's a piece of describing them as the hunter then that yeah. is not totally true or yeah so uh, the point being some of the idea of men grill men cook because meat because we are we have done this historically is like not fully accurate the idea even of hunters and gatherers not fully accurate and just another random thing that i found is that um, the idea that men were the hunters and went out and got meat to provide for their family is i saw another thing that was like no they shared shit so you i i feel like a lot of nuclear family stuff a lot of right-wing politician stuff is based on this as well and it's yeah. like no they did they actually shared among their community not provide for their immediate family so yeah yeah um yeah so that's that's the more accurate understanding and 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 knowledge of hunters and gatherers i need guns so i can protect my family Mm -hmm. and kill the meat (laughs) and kill the meat yeah (laughs) well that's actually kind of a a a good segue in a way you talk about the presumption that we make right Mm -hmm. like i we we assume i think that grillers and barbecuers are men Mm -hmm. and it turns out that that's basically true for the most part are you bringing but, more data but no okay no i'm oh, not okay. i'm okay. not i'm I'm gonna talk to you about barbecue and lesbians um wait 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 wait. yeah lesbians doing the act of barbecuing correct not cooking lesbians for consumption <laughs> <laughs> i didn't even hear it when i said it and you're super right here's a public service announcement do not slather lesbians in barbecue sauce and try to consume them they fucking hate that yeah, they're not happy <laughs> no about no that unless a, it's at all no yeah no. um so <laughs> oh god so um uh, thrillist.com in austin has a story called how two women are disrupting the boys club of texas barbecue Ooh. so uh, La Barbecue, which is based in Austin, and I maybe you East Austin is it, that a place? Mm-hmm. Like, have you been to there? Yeah, is it filled with lesbians? I I wouldn't know. I never went. Maybe maybe that's an answer to your question. All right. No, I don't know. So so Leanne Mueller, who is with Ali Clem, the two of them are a lesbian couple, but Leanne is the granddaughter of a very famous austin barbecue 
pioneer celebrity. Mm. Apparently, there's meat celebrities in the world. <laughs> Um, but but Louis Mueller is his, is his name, and uh, apparently, like in the barbecue world, it's this legendary destination in Taylor, Texas. Uh, he opened that place in 1949, and it's quote a mandatory pilgrimage for barbecue lovers. And <laughs> there's <laughs> when you think of these like kind of familial or dynasty kind of, like you want to have a son so you can pass on the family business. You, that's an outdated concept. You don't have to have a son. You can you can have a lesbian. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's just almost as good. Um, so she said, "quote I started working at Louis Mueller Mueller in middle school. My dad had me cleaning tables, washing dishes, and drying silverware. I'd dry it, and my grandpa would roll it. My grandpa loved it. It was a Zen thing." But uh, she tried to not be a barbecuer. She mm. ended up going into photography and is now one of the most well-known photographers in Austin and regularly shoots covers for Texas Monthly. Oh, wow. That's a big magazine. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then uh, she and her partner um, got together and then later decided to get back into the family business. Mm. And what what I what I think is really interesting is at least according to this article there are a few notable female figures there's tootsie tominets of snow's barbecue in lexington laura loomis of two bros barbecue market in san antonio <laughs> two bros that's but, funny but with with there's a couple of exceptions but women are rarities in the world of texas barbecue hmm. and the newlywed mueller and clem might be the only same-sex couple in the industry damn clem said quote when we first started we got picked on but I cook a damn good product. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm married to a woman, that has nothing to do with the food. The I the idea of adults picking on each other is just the <laughs> dumbest. Like fucking, that's the dumb. What? How did they pick on her? What did they? Uh, that's yeah. I mean, I know, I know what happens, but that maybe it's just the phrasing or like you picked on. Oh, hey, barbecue face. Yeah. Also, that seems like a like better way to label it than they were mean to me because like then you're being a girl and you're being like sensitive and you're being hyperbolic but like to pretend it's good natured or like yeah. to, to say picked on is like the least bad way to say i don't know yeah like, it kind of undersells the i mean in the barbecue industry you call it ripping <laughs> <laughs> that's, <sighs> fantastic. that's fantastic that's fantastic Anyway, yeah, so they're like super, super successful and uh, they are planning on expanding, but like they're just these these lesbians in that world that are like totally rocking it. And uh, I, I thought it was just really interesting that like, at least according to this source, they're the, the only same sex couple in the industry. Yeah. Which the phrasing of that leads me to believe that there are also no gay couples, mm. like male gay couples yeah. that are in the industry either. Yeah. So that got me on this. Okay. Well, but, I mean, it's interesting that the lesbian couple is involved in the Texas barbecuing stereotypically masculine thing. I feel like the, there's a gay couple that is in the wine industry and it's mostly straight people or something, but it's like gay men. I don't know. I, it's interesting how that n gay men would follow and break into stereotypically gay shit and, you know, women would, lesbians would. You know, break into stereotypically masculine shit. I wonder if if that's more likely a w of a way for us to break into stuff is still in line with some of these stereotypes. Yeah, I mean the the the, the presumption that lesbians are masculine, I, yeah. I think, is very much alive and well. And there's a reason that I have lesbian barbecue in my search history because I was like. <laughs> 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 getting any... It's not the reason you think. Though. <laughs> yeah. I want to see lesbians get spit roasted. Let's, let's... <laughs> <laughs> they hate it, but they, you know, yeah, you know. the, yeah, like lesbians presume masculine are allowed to eat food, whereas gay men aren't allowed to eat. That yeah, there's. Huh. Yep. Well, so that got me on this whole like kick about lesbian barbecue, sure. and um, one of the things that that came out of that was this. Uh, Entertainment Weekly article called How to Host a Lesbian Barbecue. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> but all of it was behind, uh, it was really just a, a thinly veiled rapper for uh, talking about Melissa McCarthy's <laughs> new comedy, Tammy. 
<laughs> okay, I've not heard of this. Um, apparently, in Tammy, the there's a uh, Melissa McCarthy's character and Susan Sarandon, who plays her alcoholic grandmother, get invited to a Fourth of July barbecue thrown by their pal Lenore, played by Kathy Bates, and Lenore's partner, who's played by Sandra O. Oh. Is this a current thing? It was in twenty. 20- 14 oh okay okay it's so it's still, still that like that ensemble is how did i not hear about that that's some apparently there's a 150 person lesbian barbecue in the movie <laughs> tammy and um it, so so like they're but their steps like it was it's like seo magic at work <laughs> like, like it's the title is how to host a lesbian barbecue but then like it just talks about this movie the oh, whole time but sure. like, step one invite 150 awesome lesbians step two secure a sweet house because the director found a gorgeous waterfront estate near wilmington north mm. carolina to film it blah 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 step three set the mood step four blow up a jet ski <laughs> I'm, is that something that happened in the movie i don't know oh, i have no. not seen it <laughs> <laughs> Nor can you read this article. But this article is working. Okay. Because oh. now I want to see it. Okay. <laughs> I want to see a, a jet ski blow up at a lesbian barbecue. Yeah. And I love Melissa McCarthy and Sandra Oh and Kathy Bates and Susan Sarandon. Huh. Why haven't I seen this movie? I don't know. Let's stop and watch it now. Let's... That movie was real wow, good. Wow, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> um and then and then and then that also got me going down this idea of how many Gay bars have you been to that labeled themselves as a grill? You, it's like touching back on the thing that I think that you were just saying, that like gay guys don't eat. Yeah. And like they're not allowed to associate themselves with food. I don't, uh, none that I remember, but that's not very meaningful use, like information, because I don't remember shit. Well, and I'm, I'm sure there are some yeah. like l- listeners, let me know, like if there's a, if there's a bar and grill that's like for sure the gay. Mm thing like let me know but uh it's very easy to find lesbian bars that are bar and grill Hmm. but i want to talk to you about my favorite one okay of all of the ones that i looked at are you are you saying lesbian bars are more likely to be whatever's bar and grill yes huh just based on like my it's not scientific but based based on my google search history Yeah. yeah um interesting and before I go into all of this, I have some nervousness about some gay bars and s- presumably some lesbian bars are run by shitty people. Mm. They're either not actually in the community and they're just using us for our money mm-hmm. or they are in the community and are awful people. Yeah. I don't know. I have not vetted the owners of this or any of the establishments that I'm going to talk about. So... I want to know. If they're awful people, please let me know. Oh. This is not an endorsement. Okay. I'm just talking about the interesting things that I found. Okay. Uh, I want to talk to you about San Diego's Gossip Grill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I already... I don't care if the owner's problematic. <laughs> if they, they were funny enough that I can get over it. Uh, it opened in 2009, and it is a full-on lesbian bar and grill. And... um. Yeah, 2009 in San Diego, and it is run by a company called Urban Mo, <laughs> as in Homo, mm-hmm. who has multiple locations. The it's a gay couple that own an a male gay couple that own and operate Urban Mo, and Urban Mo has a bunch of different kinds of bars and restaurants in the San Diego market. This Gossip Grill happens to be one of them. But their other locations are Urban Moe's Bar and Grill, which is not explicitly gay as far as I can tell. What? But it's in the... Um, but uh, anyway, the, the founders, Doug Snyder and Chris Shaw, have been together since 1983. Damn. And uh, they have donated and or raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for the LGBTQ plus community in San Diego. So anyway, Moe's Bar and Grill, which is their oldest location. Then they also have a a restaurant called Salad to Go Go. (laughs) That seems like a gay establishment if if I were to just, yeah. Yeah, there's a place called Inside Out that looked more upscale to me just based on looking at it. Hmm. Then uh, they have a brewery, Hmm. which that sort of bucks stereotypes a little bit, right? Hillcrest Brewing Company the the beers that they have are really it, some of them have uh, like they have a banana hammock scotch ale 
and they have one called the Crotch Rocket Irish Style Red. Oh, my God. Oh, God. And they have an IPA that is called Hop Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, they claim to be the first gay brewery that has ever existed. Interesting. And let's see. Looking a little bit further, they have a place called Barrel and Board, which is, quote, an upscale bar and restaurant specializing in woman forward and POC wines and spirits for something intimate or something eventful. They have a, a Mexican food restaurant called Baja Betty's, which is not, again, it's not explicitly gay because there's food. <laughs> but, <laughs> but there is a giant neon sign that says Home Sweet Homo on Aww. it. Okay, back to back to Gossip Girl. Right. So, like, I don't know why I'm so amused by this, but I super duper am. There's something about lesbians being overtly sexual that makes me very happy. Hmm. So the 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 and it's run by dudes. So who knows? Like, it might be. I don't know who came up with all of this stuff, but I still think it's hilarious and it seems to be working. So, like, their menu for Gossip Girl, uh, they don't have appetizers. That section of the menu is called foreplay. <laughs> And uh, then they've got their dessert section, which is called the happy endings. <laughs> and then the other side of their menu has the lick her <laughs> section from liquor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, their non-alcoholic cocktail section is called dry hump. <laughs> <laughs> and their their cocktails are hilarious to me. Some of them. There's sachet frosé, <laughs> pussy punch, a coochie cooler. They have a drink. They, they seem to have like a, I think they have a division and a product naming division yeah. that, that comes up with these masterful, like these are all incredible. I, <laughs> they're so good at this. Uh, they have a drink called Princess of Labia. <laughs> uh, they, they have one called uh, Milf Bait. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, one called Lady Wood. Uh, nip slip, camel toe mojito, scissor sister, boss lady, lady bits, pump and hump. They have, uh, and then their non-alcoholic cocktails. There's one called Jill off, <laughs> like a Virgin Mary. Um, I, I think the reason seeing overt lesbian sexuality is nice and, and we enjoy it. Cause I do too. Like is because gay men are the ones that are presumed to be super sexual. Mm. So to see that, other places and also female sexuality has always been presented in terms of what's in it for the dude so lesbians not at all about the dude and they're sexual for their sake for the sake of two women who want to be sexual for themselves and in this case you know using that as a joke or or, or for fun i think that's why it's a it's enjoyable yeah absolutely i i agree i agree i agree and i think there's something about like the way the shitty way in which straight dudes talk about and objectify women mm-hmm. and are just generally awful people when a lesbian says it it's hilarious <laughs> and that's just like a recognition of the power differential involved or something yeah. and like when we do it we know we're kidding yeah like like we could tell the same joke as a straight guy and the straight guy is being homophobic and yeah. we're being hilarious yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> i sure hope that's true because i've been banging on that <laughs> uh let's see Oh, yeah, there's a drink called the Bean Flicker, which, put in a clitoris reference, I'm <laughs> down. Um, and uh, that, that's, I guess that's all I'll say about, about them. Just, uh, they are very active in the Lesbian Bar Project and uh, hmm. making sure that spaces for lesbians survive in this country because they are dying at a very fast and alarming rate. And I, I I hope they're good people because it looks like fun and the menu is super awesome and there's pictures of happy lesbians everywhere. Uh, so if you're in if you're in San Diego, let me know if it's an awesome place or not. But I kind of want to go to there. Yeah, let's do a show there. That's gossip. We girl. shouldn't do a show at a les- Hey, lesbians, it's us, <laughs> two gay dudes. Um, okay. My last thing, yeah. I mentioned that gifts for men, we talked a little bit about how you kind of pick these stereotypically masculine things and then get 
roll with it and then it becomes part of the thing anyway i looked at the top three sites that showed up when you search for gifts for him oh no and i'm going to tell you about some of the grilling related items that appeared in that list as well as other gifts for him we already said giant spatula it has to be metal (laughs) preferably with like teeth on the side of it for (laughs) like nobody uses that but like there they are yeah to make it a little bit more bush and maybe like if it could have like a built-in bottle opener even better (laughs) There was one of the things on the list was like baseball themed bottle opener or something that was like, sure, let's just combine two dude things. I don't know. Uh, Do you remember the flip flops that had the bottom, but the bottle opener in the bottom of the shoe? Yes. Are are those, those are yours? No. Oh, my, my ex brother-in-law had some. You just have a bottle opener on your keychain, right? Yeah. And the fact that you know that means it's been useful because I fucking whip it out and help people out all the time. It's only because I take your keys when I'm going to let Reynolds out. So I just... Oh. Well, people... I used it. I used it this weekend. Oh, good for you. But that's very bro of you. That's very... I think that's not a, a straight thing. That's a frat thing. I mean, to always have a bottle opener on hand. Yeah, and frat guys are not straight. We know uh, that. In my dreams. Um... <laughs> Men's Health had, see here are some of the grilling related things, a tailgating canopy. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, sure, which would be like with a giant sports logo of some kind on it, or that's too gay because it's a pavilion. Uh, or like it's, it's <laughs> no, I think a, you can have your your home team's logo or something on it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, no, you have to. Oh, have to. Required. Yeah. Yeah, it, to show everyone how much you care. Yeah, if it's just a tent, that's a gazebo and that's gay. <laughs> Gazebos are kind of gay. They several of these lists had things that were also indoor cooking related, so they weren't as like we're butch lists. Uh, there was a mixer on there, great. So, um, uh, pizza oven, what, like a stand mixer. Yeah, yeah. Stand like the Eminem song. Stand, mixer. stand. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> stand mixer is like a DJ that loves everyone. Um, a pizza oven. Great. That seems to be like a, a trend. So uh, pizza oven, I'm putting in the grilling category. It's like an outdoor item that cooks shit that you get to feel like a dude and have fire. Yep. Uh, and a charcoal grill. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Reader's Digest, there was a grill smoker. There was multiple things of meat. Like, you know, get dad a box of meat. <laughs> you know? Like, uh, and there was a frying pan. GQ had an apron. That's a there's a certain kind of aprons, you know, kiss the chef or whatever. Uh, there was a kitchen utensil set. So I, there was a uh, there was a I think a regular size spatula in that. It wasn't as extreme. Unacceptable. I, think. I know it's off the list. It needs to be 16 inches long, mm-hmm. massive, shiny metal <laughs> with like spikes coming out of it. <laughs> Yep. Um, I feel very strongly about this. Yeah, yeah. And and at the other end, there's one of those naked women, like you turn it and the women's uh, clothes come off, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or or like one of those like fly swatters that electrocutes them that like would maybe it's be... like, try to make this death as painful as possible. <laughs> we are the hunters. Uh, we have been born and bred to zap flies <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and they had a pizza oven on their list so those were like some of the definitely you know cooking and in a specific way grilling is is part of what shows up on these gifts for him lists other items then i just kind of categorized some of the other things that showed up on this list necktie tie was not they, they had trendy clothing i think especially like gq but tie was not on that list it can't be a bow tie that's gay has that's to be, gay it has to be a necktie but i i think to me, I think that these lists are trying to be cool and hip. And they, I think they had some cool, interesting new things. But I think Ty is so, everyone knows that's so played out. If you saw Ty on the list, you'd be like, Bleh. so I did not see any ties. Okay. So Cuff, these are not. Cufflinks, tie clip, wallet. <laughs> wallet. There was one that was like aluminum wallet. Sure. <laughs> Your wallet is not dude enough. Sure. Um, I need a new wallet because the, 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 um, the guy I'm seeing, uh, weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> His wallet is exactly the same. Really? Yeah. Your wallet is so dad, though. He yeah. also has a ridiculously thick wallet. That's the same color, same <gasps> wow. material. Yeah. That's a lot. Um, I have accidentally picked up his wallet multiple times. <laughs> 
robe. There are some things that are take care of yourself, but in a certain way, robes, there's skin care stuff. There's beard care. There's certain kinds of care that you're allowed to do. Beard care feels like an okay thing. Yeah. It's like so, care for yourself, but in a way that involves your hair, yeah. <laughs> your facial hair, your, your, yes, your dude hair. Yes. Your, your dude hair. <laughs> uh, there was a vacation Chardonnay oil. That's like not as that's dude. too gay. <laughs> there's like briefcases or luggage or gym bags were sure. uh, common uh, j- workout equipment as well. Like you, need this kettlebell or whatever yeah Um, which you need to work out is that what that gift says (laughs) there's some of this stuff but yeah yeah Uh, hopefully you know the person well enough to know they one of my exes uh, he was really sweet he gave me some like under eye cream and he was like this is because you said you wanted to right. do more yeah. to take care of. Yeah. He, he was like yeah. trying, yeah. and I was like, no, 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 yeah, yes, yes, yes. I will, I do want this. I, this is not just like a veiled, you know, insult. It was, yeah. it was sweet and funny. Yeah, some of these things could be, well, some of these things could be veiled threats, like knives. <laughs> <laughs> knives showed up a bunch. Great. I don't think knives show up on lists for what to get her, for what to get mom. For That's the, true. Uh, tech stuff like uh, headphones, cologne. Uh, alcohol and whenever they had alcohol it was like cocktail shakers or whiskey or wine related yeah um yeah. one of my favorites there was a literal shed oh, oh. <laughs> get him a shed great sure yeah you can put your dude stuff in there you could yeah your lawnmower <laughs> <laughs> another one that the last one is <laughs> the fucking worst gift ever a garage storage rack isn't that such a dude gift oh, here? No. I don't know what to get you. Here's a garage storage rack. Mm-mm. You know how you want things to be stored, but up and inconvenient? <laughs> Here's a garage storage rack. Nope. Um, yeah, those are some of the, the dude gifts that you can get your dude. Dude. Do we do it? Yeah. I I think we talked about a lot of stereotypes and be, and beyond just grilling and and about the, the root of some of stereotypes and the connection between other i mean we didn't we didn't talk about grilling like you know like putting putting um being interviewed for a job you're not qualified for or talking to the police Mm -hmm. or putting in a storm drain or (laughs) that's true we did not talk about putting in a storm drain putting putting uh gold and jewels in your teeth (laughs) that's true we didn't talk about any segments that are funny for the first five seconds and then you actually have to talk about storm drains for like another 10 minutes so i think i think i'm fine with none of the pun pun topics um should we take a break yeah yeah let's take a girl break let's take a break medium rare you ready yep so are we back we're back we're back <laughs> we're gonna do our gays and straightest we're gonna do our gays and straightest but first our website is gayishpodcast.com we are on instagram at gayish podcast and others at various different names mostly including gayish podcasts like <laughs> facebook twitter youtube discord spaces our hotline you can send us text messages or leave us voicemails especially if it's questions from ma johnson for ma splaining yes it's 5855-GAYISH that's 585-542-9474 standard rate supply you don't have to be a patreon member to leave us a voicemail for her to answer so anyone everyone please do that we really need questions yep. thank you um our email is gayishpodcast at gmail.com and our physical mailing address is post office box 19882 Seattle, Washington, 98109. Uh, we are accepting applications for our production assistant job available on gayishpodcast.com slash jobs. Yeah. Uh, available, uh, we're taking applications through May 15th. So you got another, you Two know, weeks, some ish, yeah, less. 10 days, yeah. whatever. You know, you got, you can subtract the current date from 15. You got this. Great. Um, gay straightest? Uh Well, first, oh. I wanted to say... Our Discord server mm-hmm. just had. There's an AMA channel on mm-hmm. our Discord server, and they did a uh, one of our one of our listeners did an AMA for I restored my foreskin. Yeah, and um, so like the, the Discord community is really interesting. Yeah, and it is is a cool place to chill out. Yeah, so. thank you to Brandon Pettigrew again for not only creating it but he co- coordinates that shit. So thank you, and thank you to yeah for doing the the foreskin restoration and i know that i said it we said it goose we said it at the top of the show uh but the cyber socket awards 
please go vote for us right now. The day this episode drops is the last day of voting, and we would love to be able to walk down that red carpet and blow everyone there because we won. I don't know. <laughs> it would be very cool to in front of all these porn stars get on a stage and accept an award and like then cool for our famous first award. Porn, <laughs> for our first award gay porn stars would know who we are for for once in our lives. Yeah, that's okay. right. That's right. Yeah. Oh my god, there's something poetic and amazing about porn stars watching us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, Gay Astratus. This is our Gay Astratus, sponsored by Spaces. Spaces, a new group chat app for niche queer communities by Hornet. Uh, I'll go. Great. Uh, my gayest is, I even said this as it happened um, a few days ago, of our group that plays D&D. We did not have other people were doing shit. So just the gays got together. Yeah. It was a very gay Friday night for us. Uh, the straightest is that what we did with that night is play board games yeah, <laughs> like you would think when getting a bunch of gays together we would i don't know drink rosé and be cunty fuck each other oh, like, sure. yeah. oh, and or bang yeah, yeah yeah but we did none of that um and it's a lot of fun so yeah what about you yeah it was good we need to win that game though that yes okay is that game available for purchase or is that a kickstarter what is it the dark tower return to dark Nazareth? tower okay the Dark Tower of Nazareth? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, great. That's a, a very fun game. It is fun. Uh, so the gayest thing about me this week, I went back into the office for the very first time oh. Thursday and Friday last week. Oh. And the gayest thing about me was the realization that I was going to meet two of my coworkers for the very first time. We've worked together for over, like almost a year now, and I've yet to meet them. One of them, which was my <laughs> manager. And I was like... I need to look real cute. What do I wear? <laughs> yeah. What am I wearing to work? I like went through my closet like several times to figure out what I was. I, I wanted it to be like gay, but still conservative and business appropriate. It was yeah. like, yeah, yeah. I had a whole crisis about it. <laughs> but then the, the straightest thing about me this week was then going to work and talking to my boss about the virtues of Chipotle when you're on keto. <laughs> <laughs> we were comparing notes about diet and exercise and stuff. And is like, your boss keto too? Uh, no. Oh, okay, okay. But he is a uh, uh, gluten free. Oh, okay. And doesn't drink. But also, he was, you mean he's lame? He was taller and more attractive than I expected. Which you like, even though I have these virtual relationships with these people, until you see them in person, you don't actually know what they are like. You don't know how big their arms might be. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Or like, yeah. <laughs> what angle they're using might change their face in yeah, some random yeah. weird way. Like it's, just, it's so bizarre to me to like actually like make a real human connection. Ugh, the worst. I, but I think it matters and is important. Too. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Yes. It's good. It's good. Anyway. Uh, uh yeah. So we got a listener's just gay. We, we got a listener's gayest and straightest from spaces. Yes. We asked y'all to post them. Um, I had a lot of great ones. Thank you for posting them there. My favorite one is, from Brad, straightest, having to attend a Republican political conference for work. Oh, What no. is your job? Uh, gayest, hooking up with a cute concierge at the hotel where the event was being held. Oh, great. <laughs> I love that idea of going to a Republican uh, con like political event and <laughs> like fucking someone there. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and like... There's probably a lot of competition if the Republicans were in town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, that concierge got hit on so much all night. It was oh, probably a good night. Um, so uh, if you want to uh, join Download Spaces, you can search in the uh, app downloader on your iPhone, which is the App Store, uh, for Hornet Spaces or Queer Spaces. Download that. I'm there. And we have a decent community there and a bunch of other podcasts are there but join our the gayer space hey Kyle. hey mike let's do a fill in the spaces oh okay okay for next week yeah, but, yeah i want you to do it oh wow um uh and you can make it about me i support that okay okay uh kyle's really good at thinking up spaces on the fly space no okay um <laughs> <laughs> okay your fill in the spaces is mike's voice sounds blank after a night of blank great uh <laughs> Post your answer and we'll read our favorite one or ones on the next episode. That is it. This has been Gayish. A special thank you to that dude that made the Weber grill out yeah. of a buoy. Weber. <laughs> thank you to uh, lesbians who eat meat. 
The carnivores don't get enough love, and especially lesbian carnivores. Yeah. And uh, anthropologists? Archaeologists. Yeah, both. Thank you to Data Lounge for sucking worse than Reddit. <laughs> Boy, what a garbage trash. Of- <laughs> Thank you to the following Super Gap Bridgers. Josh Copeland, Forrest Nail, Patrick Martin, Nanonima, James Barrow, Steve Douglas, Explosive Lasagna, Christopher Farrell, Jamie Pugh, Kevin Henderson, Tipsy McStumbles. Speaking of stumbles. Tipsy McStumbles, Donald Linsky, Thomas B., Dusty Sands, A.E. Coleman, Chris Cagetorian, Jerome York, and Cian and Javi. We appreciate you. We do. That's it. This has been Gage from the Chris Cagetorian Studios. I'm Mike Johnson. I'm Kyle Getz. Until next week, be butch, be fabulous, be you. Cook out my dick. Cook I, out! Cook out in my ass. No, I got nothing. Bye. Barbecue, BBQ, Bareback Queers. Oh, damn it! Let's change the name of our podcast. <laughs>